Hello and welcome to my Nespresso Creatista Plus review. Is it truly master of its domain? Let's make a latte. What I do like about this machine is it's a lot quicker to heat up than my previous Latissima Plus. It only takes about three or four seconds, whereas the other one used to take days. Well, not days, but you know what I mean. You can see here how long it used to take for the old one to heat up in the morning. Especially annoying if you're preparing a milk drink. Okay, now it's in the previous drink I prepared, so I need to change that to latte. Even though I'm making adjustments here on the new one, the old one is still heating up. Milk temperature is ideal. Froth is four. Okay, that's good. Let's go back and make the coffee. See, look, it's only just finished heating up now. Right, let's uh, zoom in a little bit here. So the only thing I would say is keep an eye on the milk temperatures. It tends to be hotter with the first coffee you make in the morning, about four or five degrees. For example, when you set it to ideal, really your maximum milk temperature should be around 65, whereas I tend to find it goes from about 67 to 70. This thing has a number of different milk settings. Two cools, an ideal, two hots, and four very hots. So you can usually find a milk temperature setting to your liking. The milk temperature ranges from 56 to 76 degrees centigrade, that's 133 to 169 degrees Fahrenheit. There are also a number of different milk froth settings from 2 to 30 millimeters, which is 0 0.08 to 1.2 inches. You can adjust the coffee volume from 25 to 60 milliliters, which is 0.85 to 2 ounces. Okay, that's done, so let's just take the milk off. Clean it, wait for the purge. Meanwhile, let's just do that. Take a look up there. Can you see how creamy that is? Very nice. Let's uh, pour the drink. I'm no latte artist, but that looks really nice to me. Cheers. Mm, that's gorgeous. Nice latte. Cheers, Creatista. Whilst I enjoy that, let's have a look at a couple of the features here. What I would say is it's a very easy machine to use on the whole. You've got a drawer here holding your capsules. You've got a small pull-out espresso shelf for the smaller cups. As you see you've got your steam wand here. What I would say is that it does need cleaning quite a lot so you have to keep an eye on that. You do need to clean it after every use. You've got your water tank here and as you can see it's got a little puck here. This plastic puck is the level indicator and it tells the machine when it needs water. And it's quite clever because as you can see, it's got a range of adjustment there over about three centimeters. So what that means is that the machine does not stop making a coffee in the middle because that's dropped. The machine is using a hall sensor. So what that is is a piece of metal and a magnet and when they're misaligned, it tells the machine that needs refilling. And then at the back of the machine, is tucked away in a bit of a silly place, in my opinion. Now let's just grab that so the camera can see it. Is 
the nozzle cleaning tool here. And this has a very small pin which is used to clean the nozzle of the milk wand. And the key thing is you have to undo the nozzle, which can be a little difficult, I have to say. There we go. Undo the nozzle. The nozzle's in two parts, the chrome outer bit and the plastic inner bit. But if you can see, there's the very small pieces here and then you clean them with the tool by pressing into each one. I would say it's worth cleaning them in hot water as well, because sometimes there's blockage in here. Now the plastic inner piece has two O-rings really, one black one in the middle and one white one here. Both need cleaning to make sure they seal properly. And then this just goes back into here quite easily and then screw back in the chrome piece. And that's it. One thing I would say after owning this for a while is this is really difficult to keep clean. Fingerprint magnet is an understatement. Um, you've got stainless steel here and here, and this is metal. The front is plastic, chromed plastic. Um, this is metal. This is metal, this is metal, this is metal. So it's a very well built machine, but it can be a nightmare to keep clean. And of course at the front here, you've got your drip tray. So let's empty the drip tray out. Quite easy to do. Uh, you also have here your, oh, your indicator that tells you whether or not the drip tray is full. So it pops up so that you find it difficult to put a cup in it. You've also got your temperature sensor here Really important to keep that clean because it can cause problems with overheating the milk if it's not kept clean. So what we're going to do now is put back the water tank. Let's see if I can get it in shot. Right, what I would say about this is it's quite easy to do, but it's also not that difficult to get wrong. So let's put back that. Let's put back the cleaning tool. Now, I would say do it like this. Put the bottom in first and then the top. If you try and come at it from the side, or even put the top first in and the bottom, you might find that it leaks because there's a little plunger in the bottom which moves up, obviously to let the water down, but sometimes you'll find it leaks. Okay, so that's it really. Um, very impressive machine. For people, who, for people who want easy coffee, nice coffee, and something that's nice to look at in your kitchen. Works really well in my opinion. Please remember to like and subscribe if you feel like doing so. Helps me out a great deal. I'll put a link in the description to this via Amazon. Any purchases made via that link go to help out this channel and they're much appreciated. And that's it. Thanks for watching. See you next time.